Hello, Headbangers. My name is Alan, and I'm here today to review the new album from Sulphur Eon. It's called Seven Crowns and Seven Seals, and it was released on October 13th on Van Records, an outstanding label from Germany that features a lot of really high-quality heavy metal bands. <laughs> If you're not familiar with Sulphur Eon, they play a sort of blackened death metal and have basically all of their lyrics, artwork, and imagery centered around the works of H.P. Lovecraft, the you know, Cthulhu mythos and you know, related horrors. Some things I think that are very important to understand about Sulphur Eon right off the bat, however. First, they're not playing a blackened death metal in the same vein as many other bands that label gets applied to. This band has also a strong dose of atmospherics. There's a heavy, doomy sensation, a lot of very crushing slow riffs included in the music. So it's not just blasting and blaring away in some kind of satanic blasphemy. There's a very leaden weight and a great oppressive atmosphere to the way Sulphur Eon composes their music. The other thing that's very important to note with this band is that they very much understand the source material they are referencing in their lyrics, and they do it justice. Let's face it, these days there are more bands in heavy metal singing about Lovecraft monsters than you can swing a cosmic tentacle at. But Sulphur Eon really goes deep into the mythos, into the different stories and entities, and you get the sense that they very much appreciate the writings of Lovecraft and want to do it justice, and they very much do. I'd say Sulphur Eon is to Lovecraft sort of what summoning is to the works of J.R.R. Tolkien, that it's not just sing a fancy chanty song about hobbits, but, you know, really try to create, you know, the atmosphere and the feelings associated with those works. All right. So now that we understand what Sulphur Eon is really doing, what's up with the new album? On their previous album, the Scythe of Cosmic Chaos, we saw the band moving a little bit away from the pure intensity of their first two great albums, which were Swallowed by the Ocean's Tide and Gateway to the Antisphere. Both incredible albums, but the Scythe of Cosmic Chaos did see them leaning a little bit more on the atmospheres and a little bit less on the aggressive side. And that is a trend that we see continued on the new album, Seven Crowns and Seven Seals. However, do not fret, there is still plenty of intense music here. The point is that Sulphur Eon is shifting the balance slightly, whereas older albums may have been a little more focused on the aggression and had these atmospheric parts in the background. Now the atmospherics are coming to the fore, and the intense, aggressive moments are being used to accentuate and punctuate those kind of moody, darker, melancholic moments within the music. We see this on display right away in the first full song, Hammer from the Howling of Void. In the first few seconds as the song opens up, you have nice atmospheric parts, even featuring you a cleaner guitar tone to help set that kind of ethereal vibe to the music. But within a few seconds after that, the band is taking off at full speed, drumming kicking in and letting out channeling pure aggression as well. And again, the point here is that Sulphur Young can do both, but they can also meld the two when needed, as heard on the chorus to this song. So right away in the first full number, you're already getting you know, a taste of everything that Sulphur Young can do and do incredibly well. We hear more surprises on the second track, Usurper of the Earth and Sea. This is one of the tracks that was previewed early on the band's Bandcamp page. 
This one features an Eastern rhythm in the melodic elements, which is very cool and works quite well in this case. When we get into track three, the yawning abyss devours us. This is when we notice something else entering to the sulfur aeon formula. There's more of a clean vocal style uh, going on, especially in the chorus of the song. And it starts to lead a little bit more of an epic grandeur to the music. This is something that can be lost in Sulfur Eons music because it does tend to be very primal, very dark, aggressive, moody, and heavy. But on this track, you really start to notice that they are trying to achieve and construct something that has a more epic quality to it as well. And they do it extremely well. But again, after the chorus is over, the band jumps right back into more aggressive territory and keeps the song moving. And these parts, you know, are interwoven very nicely. There's no jarring transitions from moody to blasty or anything like that. The songs are very smooth. The transitions are expertly done. It makes the songs feel very natural and very interesting. You can really follow along with the ride rather than feeling like you're getting whipped from side to side while the band tries to choose which style to play. It's not like that at all. Sulfur Eon has been crafting this kind of work for several albums now, and they've really gotten the formula nailed down perfectly. All right, Ancient Cambrian Society comes next. This song is one of the more aggressive ones on the album. It was another one featured early on the band's Bandcamp page. Then we get to the title track, Seven Crowns and Seven Seals. And this is definitely meant to be the apex of the album. This is where they're going for a huge epic sweep within the music. They start that off right away from the introduction. The song is structured around verses. You have one short verse for each of seven of Lovecraft's main cosmic horror characters, Yog sothoth uh, shub Nigora, and etc., etc. Each get their own little chant of a verse. But the song really centers around the chorus, which has a huge epic quality to it. The vocals, once again, are more clean. And it very much feels like a ritual chant that's meant to be done to rouse one of these great old ones out of their slumber and let them start to reign terror across the earth once more. Yes, this song again really highlights you know, how the band is focusing on the the ambient side of things here, really trying to create the mood and atmosphere without relying strictly on the more extreme metal elements of, you know, double bass drumming and, you know, guttural vocals. They do it extremely well here. It's a magnificent song, really stands out on the album. Then the album concludes with the final track called Beneath the Ziggurats. And again, this one's Doing the same tricks, just combining them in another slightly different way with aggressive parts relatively early. After an introduction that features whispered vocals and some actually blackened rasps uh, as the song kicks into full gear. But then as you get towards the end of the song, you hear more of these sort of, you know, echoey layers, you know, to the guitars and the vocals, which, you know, create this, you know, a very cool sensation of you know, drifting through the cosmos and, you know, having all these, you know, different realities starting to, you know, press in and crash upon your consciousness. Once again, the band is, you know, really trying to capture, you know, some of that essence of the madness, the horror, and the cosmic sweep of what Lovecraft does. And with that, the album comes to a close. So you've got an introduction and six full songs, clocking in at about 46 minutes. The album feels incredibly well-balanced. It's just the right length. 
It does not drag out longer than it needs to. And it doesn't feel like you're shortchanged and you know, left wondering where the rest of the album's at either. It features stunning cover art, just as we've come to expect from every Sulphur Eon album, and even just you know, little details they pay attention to, such as not covering up a lot of the cover with a huge logo or font for the album title. They keep those elements you know, to a minimum on all their album covers so that they can really highlight the incredible artwork, which once again really helps you feel like you're enveloped in the world of H.P. Lovecraft. So in conclusion, I've got to say it's a fantastic album. I don't have much to nitpick about on this one whatsoever. I've been playing it nonstop for several days, probably a dozen or more spins into it at this point. I can't really find anything that bothers me much about it. Maybe a couple of the songs could have been slightly shorter. They might could have repeated the chorus one less time. But again, they're trying to establish that kind of chanty, repetitive, trance-like mood. So I understand why they let the songs, you know, run the length they did. It's it's not really a problem at all. If you enjoyed their previous album, The Scythe of Cosmic Chaos, I think you'll definitely enjoy this one as well. And something that I'm really appreciating about Sulphur Eon at this point in their career is that while they're sticking to their main themes, you know, they're not drifting far away from the central concepts or style that they've used on all four albums, they are letting their sound slowly evolve. You know, Each of their four albums does sound a little bit different from all of the others. If you're paying attention, they are not simply putting out cookie cutter albums that sound interchangeable to one another. There's a different reason to listen to each of these Sulphur Eon albums, but the transitions have been gradual. They're not rapidly leaping from one style to the next to the next. They're kind of letting their musical evolution slowly, gradually take them in new directions. Much like a giant Cthulhu monster slowly trudging across the landscape of a doomed humanity. All right. So before we wrap up tonight, let's do one call to arms. Something I wanted to shout out that came out back in September is the recent EP from Wolves in the Throne Room. The EP was called Crypt of Ancestral Knowledge, and it released in September on Relapse Records. I did not get a chance to review this one. In part, you know, it's a relatively short EP. Uh, there are four tracks, although the last track is three minutes and kind of works as a slightly longer outro. Nevertheless, it is an expertly crafted EP. Wolves of the Throne Room have been, in my opinion, putting out some of their best material in recent years. And if you liked their 2021 album, uh, Primordial Arcana, I think you're really going to like the EP here as well. The first two tracks on it are beautifully put together. They feature all the kinds of basic elements you'd expect from Cascadian black metal of this caliber. The third track entitled Initiates of the White Heart is slightly different, featuring a little bit more folky, almost medieval sounding type instrumentation, but it's a great track nonetheless. And then even the outro piece is uh, really well done. Wolves are just hitting their stride. They've always been a quality band. I've enjoyed almost all of their albums back to the debut but I feel this band has actually gotten stronger and stronger with time. And I like the new material even more than I like what they were doing, say, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So uh, EPs, I know sometimes they feel like a non-essential purchase. Sometimes they include just some filler, throwaway tracks, things that were left over or random cover tunes and stuff like that. But this EP, I think, is definitely worth the purchase uh, from the gorgeous cover art to just including you four absolutely perfectly done tracks of Cascadian black metal. If you're a fan of that style or a fan of this band, this EP is worth your time to pick up. It's not one to skip over. Hopefully they'll have a new full length album out in the near future and it'll be of this same high quality. All right. That is going to do it for this album review. By all means, please go check out the new Sulphur Eon and the new Wolves in the Throne Room. And check back here at Heavy Metallurgy for more content. We usually have at least one album review each week, an album club discussion live stream on Wednesday nights. And there's our Friday night live stream for Heavy Metallurgy. 
where we bring on various guests from different bands, labels, musicians, members of the YouTube community, and just talk about metal from throughout the years and have a good time with it. That will do it for this time. So until next, everybody take care. And as always, keep banging your head, even if it's covered in tentacles. Jumbo.